Hey, what's up? How's it going? So this video I'm going to be talking about my latest Speedmaster acquisition and this is the, I don't know what the reference number is, but it's uh, the first Omega in space. And this watch is, I'm just completely thrilled with it. You know, I sold my, um, you know, my vintage Ed White, right, the Calibre 321 straight lug Speedmaster. And uh, you know, I, I made some money, some money off that piece, and uh, I just needed. You know, I realized after selling that I needed a Speedmaster in my collection. Uh, I bought a after I sold that piece. I bought a Broad Arrow reissue, and you know, it was a beautiful watch too. But you know, it just was not. It was not the same um, from what I was used to. Right, the straight lug. Uh, Speedmaster, and I really love this. You know, for me, I've gone through so many Speedmasters. I have various eight six one movements. Uh, I had two versions of the three two one movement: the straight luck case and the twisted luck case. Um, I had the broad arrow reissue, so I think this would be my sixth or seventh Speedmaster. I've really lost track, and I realized that what I really need in my Speedmaster is the applied logo right I, I really dislike the you know the omega logo to be just in print um just simply because it, look you know, it's just so much more um it's just so much more beautiful you know because it's applied there's depth to it you know it reflects kind of like that right and um, i really like the speedmaster on the strap uh, the professional models, they're 42 millimeters. They're just a, just a little too big for my wrist, right? I have very average size wrist, six and a half inches. And um, I just felt that uh, it was a little bit, a little bit big, right? That, that would be at my limit. However, this one measuring at just under 40, 39 and a half millimeters is simply perfect. And, you know, because this is a manual wine chronograph, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not gonna go swimming with it, even though it's uh, it's it's clear to be submerged up to depths of 50 meters. I wouldn't do that if I were you. If you have one of these, so I really like this Speedmaster on on the leather strap, on the calf leather strap. It's just such a nice feel. Now, um, obviously, you know this is not the original. You know this is not an exact replica of the of Wally Shur Wally Shuras Speedmaster CK2998 and what I really love about this watch is that Omega doesn't pretend to to I you know exactly replicate that watch it's never going to be the same because you know it housed the caliber 321 movement whereas this has the 1861 movement so what Omega did was they actually kind of improved on it, right? Um, what I mean by that is if you look at the the hands, right? So um, they have the alpha hands, which tell the time, and the seconds hand is, is uh, you know, the seconds hand right here is the same as the alpha hand, so that's all silver, right? So it's really, it's, I really like this detail. So when it comes to telling time, you just look at all the, the alpha hands, right? They're all silver, they're metallic, right? But once you run the chronograph, right, the hands involved would all be the white ones, right, that we're so familiar with. So that's, a, in my opinion, an improvement from the, um, that's, a, that's a, a, a nice little discreet improvement when it comes to the dial and well, when it comes to the hand layout and the choice and the choices that um, Omega made, a lot of thought was come uh, was put into this watch, right? And I think they really they really did a good job uh, in terms of uh, paying tribute to the original watch while making slight improvements where possible. And I think I think the hands. The choice of hands is an improvement over the um, over the original one, right? It, it's an improvement in execution and an idea, right? Where uh, you tell you know where the silver hands 
are um, are used to tell the time, and the white hands are used to measure the chronograph. Right? It's it's just really, really. I really love it. Of course, the case back, the uh, hypocampus, is it what it's called? <laughs> Right, uh, just like the vintage pre-moon Speedmasters, the case back only featured this uh, the sea monster, and this one uh, does the same as well. It says the first Omega in space, numbered edition, and it's just a really nice touch. Right, uh, I think the 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 biggest resistance that uh, a Speedmaster enthusiast uh, would face would be that this is a sapphire crystal as opposed to uh, the Hesalite crystal, right? Uh, the acrylic crystal, and you know it, it did it did bother. Well, I wouldn't say it bothered me, but it definitely um, was part of my uh, considerations when I took the plunge on this watch. But you know what? Well, let's face it, right? Uh, I'm not I'm not going into space. You know, I think most. Uh, speedmaster addicts or enthusiasts you know they're not going to space and uh, the, the sapphire crystal is just a little more practical right it's more scratch resistance it's harder so you know this this is after going through a lot of speedmasters you know i just had to be a little bit more realistic and say hey you know i'm not going to space i don't if it shatters, it shatters, it's okay. I'm not gonna inhale shards of sapphire into my lungs and stuff. So it's okay for my purposes, right? Uh, you know, this is this is uh, by no means uh, the original Speedmaster. But I think at, at the price point that I paid for it, I, th I, I think it's worth a, a slight premium above the regular Speedmaster, or at least the same, right? To be honest, you know, this, this, these are probably trading for um, the same amount, or even maybe slightly less than the Speedmaster Professional that comes in a huge case with a loop and the tool and everything. So um, I really like this. Let's do a wrist shot. I really, really enjoy the Speedmaster. However, you know, if you're looking for your first Speedmaster, I'm just trying to do a wrist shot, why is this? Oh. If you're looking for your first Speedmaster, this one might not, it's perfect. This one might not be the one for you. I, I think if you're, if you're going on a Speedmaster journey, if you're embarking on one, you probably should get the Speedmaster Professional, you know, manu it has to be manual wine, um, has to like crystal. But let's say, you know, you've had, you've had that before, right? You have experienced a vintage Speedmaster. You want something a little different. Uh, I, I think I have ended off my Speedmaster journey on this one, right? Vintage feel with modern practicality and modern technology. Uh, obviously, you know, in terms of movement, there's no comparison between a 321 and a 1861, right? Uh, but, you know, you can't take any anything away from this because Omega did put a lot of thought into it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't done distastefully, right? They, they even made improvements on the original one, in my opinion, when it comes to the hand selection. Anyway, um, pin buckle, really nice. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.